dear friends in Christ, thank you for always being there. It's now the 19th day in our journey through this period of grace, this season of Lent. And today, let us consider reflecting on Jesus' experience in the garden. I'm talking about the agony in the garden. In his words, he says, My soul is sorrowful even unto death. Remain here and keep watch with me. He advanced a little and fell prostrate in prayer, saying, Father, if it is possible, let this cup pass me by, yet not as I will, but as you will. We read this from Matthew's Gospel, chapter 26, verses 38 through to 39. The Lord Jesus was such in agony and prayed so fervently that his sweat became drops of blood falling on the ground. Luke chapter 22 verse 44. The agony that Jesus underwent while praying in the garden of Gethsemane was only surpassed by the brutal treatment and crucifixion he endured the following day. That Thursday night, after sharing the gift of his body and blood with the apostles, he went out to pray, and as he prayed, he fell prostrate before the Father in heaven and accepted the cup that he was given to drink. Three solid times he prayed this profound prayer. My Father, if it is possible, please let this cup pass me by, but not mine, but your will be done. Again that night would have been a sleepless one for our blessed Mother Mary. She was awoken in the middle of that night by the frightening news that Jesus had been arrested. Which mother, anywhere in the world, will be comfortable sleeping, hearing that your son is not at peace, your son is arrested? Is there anyone? Definitely no one, no mother. No matter what, the crime the son would have committed. But here is it. She went in haste to the place of Jesus' interrogation before Caiaphas and the entire Sanhedrin, watching from a distance with the other holy women and a whole college of body of spectators. Jesus had agonized in the garden and three times chosen the will of the Father. Great. St. Peter, during the communion of the night, three times denied Jesus. Everything was falling out except the love of the mother. A blessed mother during her silent presence throughout that night united her mind and her heart to the agony of her son, to his free embrace of his cross. This was his hour. This was the hour in which Jesus was to give the greatest glory to the Father in heaven. And it was also our blessed mother's hour. She was invited to freely offer her son to the hands of evil men and women. St. Peter and the other apostles lacked fidelity and commitment as these are approached. That alone sends another powerful message. When the ships are down, friends will depart. Sometimes family members will let you go. Colleagues will crucify you. Those you love will call you names. You will be betrayed. You will be set up and everyone will desert you. Those who proclaim love with their lips will fall apart. But you know what? Your family may stay with you. Your mother and possibly your father will never deny you. And such we see expressed in our blessed mother. So thanks to the many good friends you have out there who stayed with you through thick and thin when you were set up for destruction, for denial, for accusations, and divine help vindicated you. The few who stayed true in and for you through thick and thin, those are the ones that have truly defined family, and family is beyond blood. Our Blessed Mother, her son's first and greatest disciple, joined Jesus in complete surrender to the will of the Father, uncomplaining, fully accepting, 
Now on Good Friday, as Mother Mary stood before the cross of her son, she would have continued to pray in the way Jesus prayed in the garden the night before. Father, not as I will, but as you will. This must also therefore become the most central prayer in my life and in your life, each and every day, as long as we have opportunities to live. Dear friends, let us reflect today, and I ask you to reflect, I urge you rather, to reflect upon the chaos and confusion that began that night before Jesus' arrest, or with his arrest as well. Reflect also upon the moments of chaos and confusion in your own life, when you feel the burden of various crosses, troubles, challenges, calamities of life, there is but one way to properly embrace them, trusting in Christ Jesus. We must unite ourselves with the prayer of Jesus in the garden, which was also the perfect prayer of our Blessed Mother, that the will of God should always prevail. Join therefore as we pray together, through Mary, our Mother. Blessed Mother Mary, our dear Mother, you watched in sorrow as your son was arrested and treated with the gravest cruelty ever known to man. Yet, your only prayer was the prayer your son prayed in the garden. Father, not as I will, but as you will. Jesus' agony was your agony, and his surrender was also your surrender. Help us to pray to your son to learn to trust in the power of divine will and to align our will to God's own will and whatever he wishes of us. May we learn to abandon ourselves to the holy will of God at all times. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. God bless you, and thank you for being there at all times.